Are you tired of drowning in manual tasks that eat up your day? Imagine being able to automate those tedious processes with just a few clicks, saving you hours every week. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use ChatGPT to identify and automate some of the biggest pain points that almost every business faces. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to reclaim valuable time for more productive tasks and watch your efficiency skyrocket. I'll share the full framework of how I use ChatGPT to create these automations, many of which I've implemented across our team to help them and the 60,000 plus businesses they serve eliminate manual tasks. So if you're ready to discover how to leverage AI to simplify your work life, let's jump into the ultimate guide to ChatGPT powered automations. We'll start by identifying the areas in your business that are primed for automation. Let's start automating. First, we're gonna hop directly into ChatGPT. What we're gonna do is provide it with a prompt so that ChatGPT is going to be able to ask us a few questions about our business, understand what we're doing, then provide us with some solutions for automations to help us run more efficiently and operate more streamlined. So for our prompt here, um, I just have already created it, but we're gonna go along with, I plan to automate several processes in my business's operations daily. I use Zapier as a central automation tool. Please ask me about the business and what I do, and then provide me with an analysis that will help me automate workflows and save me time. Ask me about what I do, the software I use, and questions related to where I see inefficiencies. You will then provide me suggestions for what to automate and teach me how to do so. If you'd like a copy of this prompt, uh, it'll be in the description below. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this prompt over to ChatGPT. So as we can see, it's updated the memory. And here it's going to ask me a number of questions, which I'm then going to answer. And then ChatGPT is going to provide me with a number of solutions and potential automations to implement into my workflow. So we can see here, we got six different questions. So for our sake, we're going to go ahead uh, and answer those questions. And then ChatGPT is going to provide us with solutions. So first off, what kind of business do you run? What are your primary daily operations? Um, for our sake today, uh, I'm going to take the spot of a digital agency and then we're going to see the automations provided by ChatGPT. Uh, so for the first question, I am a digital agency providing services to businesses in my local region. We provide them with social media assistance and lead generation. We also assist with lead capture and uh, prospect targeting. Uh, for question two, which software or tools do you currently use in your business? Um, this is speaking about CRM, project management, email marketing and accounting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and answer this with, we are currently using the Vendasta CRM for our sales team. Additionally, we use Tally for forms and customer acquisition. And we implement Google Sheets for tracking and storing our collected data. Uh, next question, we're going to go ahead and answer what are the most time consuming tasks or processes that you handle on a daily basis. Uh, so for this one, we're going to go ahead and see that some of the most time consuming tasks that we are going through are actually going to be, for our example, creating uh, accounts and prospects in our company CRM. Um, so I'm going to tell ChatGPT that. So um, the most time consuming tasks include creating uh, 
accounts and companies in our CRM from Pally form fills along with ensuring smooth and um, we're also going to implement a portion where we are going to be focusing on our communications um, just so we're going to see some automations come along lines with those uh, smooth and efficient uh, communications with our customers. Uh, question four, are there specific areas where you feel inefficiencies or bottlenecks occur? Creating accounts in our CRM manually. Manually and entering data to and from Google Sheets. Question five, do you have any current automation set up? If so, what do they involve? Uh, for our sake, we're gonna say no, uh, and just to see what it does come up with. And then six, are there any particular outcomes you want to achieve with automation? Reducing manual data entry, improving communications, better task management. Um, so as we mentioned before, we're gonna go ahead and say um, reduce manual data entry and improve communications. So we're gonna provide those responses to ChatGPT. It's gonna update the memory of ChatGPT. ChatGPT now understands our business, knows how we operate, know what we're currently doing, and it's going to be providing us with some automations we can do. So as we can see here, the first automation it's come up with is automating CRM account creation from tally form fills. Uh, second one is gonna be syncing data between Google Sheets and the Vendasa CRM. And then the third one will be improving customer communications, sending automated emails or SMS notifications to a client when certain actions are taken, along with automating lead follow-up. Uh, and then it's gonna provide us with just some general tips for implementation. So as we can see here, it's come up with a number of different automations. And really the next step from here is gonna be taking this information and actually just building it out within Zapier. Now that we're in Zapier, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna implement that first automation where we're gonna be connecting our tally lead generation form to the Vendasa CRM. So what we do in Zapier is we're gonna go ahead and select our trigger. Um, so we're gonna go in there, we're gonna find tally, uh, select tally, uh, choose our event, new submission. Uh, we are then going to select our account to ensure that we have the correct account connected. So it's going to find our new form. If you're enjoying this video, I'd love you to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Select that, continue, trigger, select the form, uh, select our lead generation form, continue test trigger. We can see here that this has pulled in a test lead generation form. I'm gonna now just fill out a lead generation form with some uh, accurate information for myself to ensure that we have some real data that we're gonna be able to validate later on when we build out the automation. Um, so just enter my information, uh, Jacob Sirs, uh, enter my email, Jacob Sirs at test.com, job title, um, we'll go ahead with owner, company information, simple. And the company size is one to 10. Uh, I'm then going to go ahead and submit that lead generation form. And it comes up with, thank you for contacting us, Jacob. We'll be in touch shortly. So now just to ensure that that's connected to the Zap, I'm gonna go ahead and find new record. And we can see here, that it has now pulled in what I just entered into our tally form. Uh, for our first action, I'm gonna go ahead and enter a, in the Vendasta app. Uh, and, I, and I'm gonna go ahead and create our update company.
continue action. So company name is simple. Um, and of course, if your form has more information than just this demo lead form, you're gonna be able to enter all that information into this step. Um, but it's very simple just for this sake. So we're gonna go ahead uh, and just provide a company name uh, under simple for this one. So we are going to go ahead, hit continue, test step. And we can see that within the Vendasa CRM, it has now created a company. And now we can see we have a new company profile created within the Vendasa CRM with the same name and all the information um, and as we understand, this was a basic lead gen form, but if there was more information, all these fields can be filled out from the Zapier step, uh, simply by just ensuring that you fill out all the available fields here. Um, next, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to ensure that we create the contact for Jacob Sirs under the company simple and get it aligned with the Vendasta uh, account we just created. So we're gonna go ahead and add another Vendasta step Um, but this time when we choose our event, we're going to want to create or update a contact. So continue, continue with the same account. And then for our action, what we're going to want to do is enter the email that we collected from that new submission in tally. Uh, so jacobsers at test.com. Um, we didn't collect a phone number, but we did collect our name. So Jacob. And then last name, sirs. and then the job title. And then what we are going to want to do is we are going to want to associate this company with the account in the Vendasa CRM. So we're gonna go ahead and we are going to add the company ID that we received when we created the company in the previous step of this automation and enter it into the uh, associate, it, associate a company step here. So what we're gonna do is just hit continue again, and we're gonna test this step. Um, and assuming this goes through, as we can see it did, system contact ID, we can now go to our Vendasta account, refresh the page, and the contact Jacob Sirs should be appearing within the company profile. So now that I am in the company profile again, I can go over to contacts, and we can see that Jacob Sirs has been created here and added to the contact. And while we're talking about pain points, please drop a comment and let me know what's the one task you're trying to automate right now or going to automate after watching this video. I'd be happy to develop specific content on it based on the comment section. Next, we're gonna implement a prospect follow-up method utilizing both the Vendasa CRM automations and Zapier automations. What we're gonna do is start the automations within Vendasta, triggering based on an account creation. Then we'll use a webhook to send over any relevant information to Zapier, which will then draft an email within Gmail that can be sent to your prospect after they've filled out that tally form. Within our Vendasta automation, we're gonna use the trigger, a contact is created. So once we've selected that, we can go over to the action and we're gonna to wanna to only go on created, not modified. Um, so we can hit save there. And then the next step in the automation is going to be implementing a webhook step. From here, we're going to select the query parameters of all the information related to this contact that we're gonna want to use later on in our Gmail from our Zapier step. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and select these, some information about our contact to be able to send over in our webhook. So I can go in here and I'm gonna select their first name, last name, email, and such. So we'll start with first name. And then we will do the exact same process with all the same drop dropdowns. Um, this time selecting their last name. Uh, last name. Uh, so last name, then their email, trigger, contact ID, 
email and then any other relevant information that we know we're going to want to implement in our email can be added here. So for our sake, I've just kept it simple, added their first name, their last name, their email, and their company. Um, so before we can actually save this step, we're gonna need to add the webhook URL. Uh, to get this webhook URL, what we're gonna do is we're going to go over to Zapier, um, select webhooks by Zapier as our trigger, um, select the catch hook, continue, continue and we're going to go ahead and click copy on this webhook URL it provides us with. Now that we have that, we can send that over, copy and paste it into the oper paste it into the webhook URL field over in our Vendas automation and that's going to allow us to save it. Now, we have a Vendas automation that's going to trigger any time a contact is created sending over any relevant information that we've entered into the webhook step to Zapier so we can use that information for our contact to send the email. So now that we are in Zapier and we have that information, we can go ahead, we can test the trigger. To send a test webhook over to Zapier and make sure that we have all our fields mapped, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, uh, click this copy example request as curl. Uh, we can see that it's copied it to our clipboard and then we are going to go over to this uh, requestbin.com slash curl website. Um, we'll link that into the uh, description of this video. And then you're just gonna paste what you copied from the Vendast automation into here, select run. And this we can see was a success. So now when we go back to our Zapier automation, we can hit test trigger and we can see that it has pulled in all the fields that we set up within our Vendast automation. Now that we have our fields within the webhook. We can see we got it. We can continue with our selected record. Next, what we're gonna wanna do is select the Gmail app and send, create, we're gonna wanna select the Gmail app and create a draft email that'll be created in our inbox that we're gonna be able to then send out to the prospect when we're ready to send it. So we go into here for the event, we are going to do create draft, continue, connect our Gmail. So allow the access. Continue. And then for the action, we can now create our templated draft to be created in our inbox. So our subject for this is going to be, hey, and then we can go select Jacob. Uh, thanks for reaching, reaching, oh, reaching out. Uh, for our two, we are going to want to make sure that we put in that email that we got from the webhook. And then from, and then from name, we can just put whatever we want. And then we can enter our body here. So for example, hello, Jacob. And again, using those vari uh, variables that we got from the webhook step. Hello, Jacob. It is great to hear from you. Thanks for expressing your interest in Vendasta. I can't wait to connect and learn how we can help your company. And again, here we can use the field that we received from the webhook of their company name. 
grow. Awesome, so from there we can see we've created an email and then what we wanna do is test it out to make sure it's gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit continue. I'm gonna test step. So we can see that it's created a draft. Now go over to my inbox. And then once we're in my inbox, we can go to drafts. And now we can see that we have a new draft email, custom created, that will be automated. And this would all happen just from a contact being created in the Vendasa CRM. And it's that easy. With these steps in place, a draft email is ready to be sent immediately. As soon as that contact is created in your CRM, in this case, Vendasta's, you're ready to send that draft email as soon as you check it out and click that send button. Now, we're gonna hop back into ChatGPT and ask it for assistance with creating a process for fulfillment requests. Our agency is using Jira for task allocation. Just for this example, we'll be using Jira. But again, this process is pretty universal. It could be used for monday.com, for Asana, and any other task assignment, fulfillment, uh, task management softwares that are available out there. Um, but to continue with our prompt, uh, our agency is in Jira to allocate tasks. We do intake from a form. How can I create an automation that will allow for Jira tasks to be created from a tally form using Zapier. Awesome, so now we can see step-by-step -step guide to setting up the automation. It gives us the app trigger, the event, and the configuration of how to do it, uh, along with setting up the action, customizing, testing, and activating this app. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead um, and jump into Zapier and actually start building out this Zap. So now that we're in Zapier, we're gonna go ahead and once again, head over to Tally for our trigger as we are using a Tally form to intake these requests, um, new submission, continue, continue with the account. Um, and for the trigger, we are gonna select the form for future requests, I'll continue and test. This is just to confirm, once again, information's coming through. For the sake of the demo, I'm gonna now just fill out a quick feature request. So type of request, um, settings, your request in short, update, setting, options. Please elaborate on this request. I would like the settings in the product to be more self-explanatory. Um, and my email. Request. Awesome. So we can see that that was submitted. And now going back to our zap, we're just going to confirm that that submission came through and that we're going to be able to see it. Perfect, we can see that has come through. Next step, what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go ahead, select the Jira software. Uh, depending on your Jira, in this example, we use cloud, but there is a possibility that your organization's using server. Um, so you're just gonna have to be aware of that. But I'm gonna continue with event, create a issue, continue, select my account, choose the project, you're then going to select the project that you want to add this to. Uh, create the issue type. So for our sake, we're going to just go along with the story. Um, you can select the assignee. Set up all of your uh, priorities. Choose a co-reporter if necessary. Um, flag it, link it to an epic. Um, but for our sake, we're just going to enter the description. So we can see here that 
type a request. Request type along with the request. So we're gonna set up the description with the request type and the request, and then we're gonna head down to summary uh, and add in the summary that was submitted within the tally form. So continue, test step. As we can see, the issue URL has been provided directly in the automation as well. Uh, one last step we'll implement into this is the communication of the issue being created. So if we go to Google chat as a uh, action, we can go event, we can go create a message. We'll choose an account. Uh, from here, we will choose the chat room. And from here, we can add the message title. So new request. And then we will add the request name that we got from the initial tally form. Um, and then additionally, we're going to be able to add the URL that was generated from the JIRA create issue action. So we'll go continue. We'll test that step out. We can now see that in the Google chat space that I mentioned, it has the request along with the URL directly to that issue in JIRA for easy access and transparency for whoever needs to see it. And just like that, we've streamlined task management and transparency for any workflow. I hope you enjoyed this episode and got a good understanding of how you can use ChatGPT and other simple tools to create automations for your business. Please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel so you get notified when our next video is out.